In this go-around, we're doing a follow-up to the previous post about copying and pasting features in ArcGIS Pro. So if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go check it out and get caught up on that one and then come back to this one. After publishing that last video, I got an email from Jennifer Kadkin at Esri pointing me to a tool that makes it much easier to get your attributes to transfer from your source layer to your target layer. Your field names don't have to match. Heck, they don't even have to be the same type and they make the trip. I'm gonna show you how to find that tool. It's kind of hidden in the deep recesses of ArcGIS Pro. And as well, I'm gonna show you how to use it. So stick around. If you remember from my previous video on copying and pasting features, I said that you had to make the field names and field types in your target layer match the field names and types in your source layer. Well, that still works, but if the field properties don't match, you can still get the attributes to transfer. Let's look at the fields for my source and target layers. If you're wondering how to expose these field views, you can do it two different ways. There may be more, these are just the ways that I've found. First, you need to open the Layers Attribute table. There's also two ways to do that. Right-click your layer and select Attribute Table. Then from the Attribute table, you click the Burger button and select Fields View. Now I'll show you the other way with my random polygons layer. Click the layer in the contents pane, then click the data tab in the feature layer group of tabs, then the attribute table button. With random polygons attribute table active, its tab should be blue to show it's active. Click the Data tab in the Feature Layer group of tabs, and then click this Fields button. Wait a minute! So after recording all this audio, I actually found a third way, and once you know it, it's quicker. So chalk up another candy bar moment for me. If you don't know what that means, you need to go watch my first video. So to get to the fields view for each layer, select it in the contents pane, go to the data tab, and click on the fields button. Done. Where are you, Jean-Luc? There you are. A lot of cool things can be done in the fields view, and I'll have to cover that in another video someday. I think I've taken you on a long enough side trip. So here are our field views for the two layers, the source layer on the left and my target layer on the right. Some of my fields match and some don't. I've even changed the type of my square miles field to be a long integer where in the source layer it's a floating point type. We'll see how that shakes out later. To find the hidden field mapping settings, make your map active Click on the Edit tab. Now click on this little button in the corner of the Tools group. Ezra calls these dialog box launchers, apparently. That button opens up the Editor Settings dialog box. There are three groups of settings on the left. I guess we're calling these tabs. Who knows? Welcome to Pro, Land of Tabs. The three tabs are Grid, Annotation, and Field Mapping. We want the Field Mapping tab. Now we need to set our target and source layers. Honestly, I would have put the source layer on the left and the target layer on the right, but this is what we get. For my target layer, I'm selecting the Random Polygons layer. And for my source layer, I select the USA Census Populated Places layer. You'll notice Pro did a little bit of work for us. 
It looked for fields that have field names that match and then match them automatically. My place FIPS field matches the source layers field. I'm not sure why they list the alias instead of the actual field name here. Now let's go through and match up the other fields. Looks like our square miles field won't participate in the field mapping because it is long integer instead of a double. But I'm about to show you how to get around that. After we match all the fields we can here, let's click on the Expression tab. All the fields we matched on the Fields tab are now written in an arcade expression. Now we can add to this expression a statement that will convert our floating point square miles to rounded integer square miles. In this case, all we have to do is copy the format of statements above and Arcade does the conversion from float to long for us. I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of Arcade here. I'll have to leave that for a future series of videos. The first thing I need to do is add a comma at the end of the last line in the existing statement and then hit return to add a new line. I'll hit the space bar a couple of times to get things lined up nicely. Unfortunately, we need to know the exact field names for this to work, so we need our field views again. I'm not going to make you watch me open those up again, so here they are. The format of the statement is the target layers field in double quotes, so square miles in double quotes. Then a colon. Now dollar sign source feature immediately followed by an open square bracket. Then a single quote and my field name SQMI followed by the closing single quote and then the closing square bracket. Notice there are no spaces in this last part of the statement. Let's verify the expression. Looks like it verifies. I'll click OK. Now I'll select some features from my source layer. Go to the clipboard group and click Copy. Then hit that drop down arrow below Paste and select Paste Special. Now we make sure we have the paste into settings set to layer and select the target layer that we configured in the field mapping setting, which was random polygons. Now we're going to open the attribute table and see how we did. Looks like everything came across. Let's zoom in to Enid, Oklahoma. Shout out to any Enidians out there. Maybe you'd rather be called Enidonians? Enidites? People from Enid, shout out to you guys. Show your town pride in the comments. I've labeled the source layer with its square mile attribute, and you can see it's uh, got two decimal places. Now if we use the Explore tool on the Map tab to see what came over to the Random Polygons layer, we see that it was rounded correctly to 74 square miles. Nice job, Arcade. I think that trick right there deserves a subscribe. There's a little button down on the lower right. So that does it for the follow-up to copy and pasting features. Thanks to Jennifer Cadkin at Esri for showing me that trick. As I said at the beginning, field mapping works for more than just copy and pasting features. It also works for the Transfer Attributes tool as well as when you right-click a feature in your Attributes pane and then select Copy Attributes. Man, I'm seeing attributes a lot. So start messing around with field mapping and get that in your tool belt.
Couple things to watch for. If you switch to the Expression tab and modify the Arcade Expression, then go back to the Fields tab and make changes there, anything you changed in the Expression tab gets wiped out. So match up your fields first, then modify the expression to do the tricky conversions like we did. And as I mentioned in the first video, the source layer needs to be selectable, and the target features need to be editable. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions about this process. I selected a throwback to the 90s for this installment. Clueless by Paramount Pictures. Clueless is a modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma. A group of high school friends in Beverly Hills navigate high school relationships, parties, and learning to drive. So, the shopping with Dr. Seuss? Well, at least I wouldn't skin a collie to make my backpack. It's faux. Hello, there was a stop sign. I totally paused. <laughs> Yeah, okay. In this scene, the crew is on their way to a party in the valley. Maria's driving and his girlfriend, Dion, is helping him navigate. This was before smartphones, kids, so people way back then had to use an actual printed map. Looks like we're gonna have to make a cameo at the Val party. I told you I wanted it in the morning! <laughs> no! Just look Mary. at the top of the map. Okay. Sun Valley is north. No. All I see is Bel Air, okay? Then Just you're on the wrong map. Just, I'm right, not look, on the look wrong map. Look at the number map. on the top. What is the number on there the top of the map? There are no numbers on the top. There's letters. Oh! So there's another helpful GIS Chops video. If it helped you out, give it a like. Subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I put up new content. Putting out weekly videos to help you get better at your job, get you some GIS chops. If you want a specific topic covered, let me know. Right now I'm just taking shots of the dark trying to figure out what you want to see. Uh, so if you're struggling with something, let me know in the comments. Also let me know in the comments where you're at in your GIS journey. You're trying to get a job? Are you in a job moving from Mark Map to Arc GIS Pro? Let me know. I want this channel to be an interactive community so we can all help each other. There's things that I don't know that you probably do. If, if so, put them in the comments. Call me out on something I missed. So thanks for watching, and until next time, keep chopping.